What is up everybody, Jay's Two Cents here, and we waited a few years for Fractal Design to update the very famous Define R4 to now what we know as the Define R5, but it only took a few months beyond that to take it to the next step and debut the Define S. The Octane Gaming Gear combo from Cooler Master features seven backlighting colors, turbo mode, a Vago 3050 optical sensor, along with four levels of DPI adjustment. Now you can pwn noobs without pwning your wallet. Click the link in the description to learn more. The Define series is extremely popular with both, no both noise optimization and the R5 giving just astounding support for water cooling. So how could they have possibly improved upon that design? Well, they've given us the Define S, which I I'm going to just dub as Define Sexy because it takes everything we love about the R5 and cuts some of it down, but gives us more improvements for people who are looking for both airflow optimization as well as water cooling. So this thing is kind of a jack of two different trades, airflow and water cooling. As you can see, it is not a very big case at all, but don't let size fool you. Guys, that should be a piece of life advice. Now really this thing shares a lot of similarities from the R5. So why don't we focus right now on what's actually different with the Define S. We'll start with the front and some really squeaky rubber feet on my desk. It has the very uh, same faux brushed finish that the R5 has. It's not real metal, but that's kind of nice considering the fact that it's going to be a lot more scratch resistant as the you know, metal is not as scratch resistant, but there is no door. And because there's no door, that means there's no optical drives in here. So as you can see, the front is all about wide open airflow. It has got massive vents along both sides of the case, allowing air to come in through the sides. And don't let that uh, fool you, it is also filtered. If you just pull from, I'm gonna pull from the top because that's easier from where I am right now. This thing just pops right off. And then you have a magnetic front filter. Magnets are nice to see because they are just so much easier to get on and off and there's nothing to worry about breaking, no tabs or anything. But that reveals the very first difference compared to the R5 is that we do have triple 140 millimeter fan support uh, on the front. So you can have three 140s on here or three 120s, obviously including the same size of radiators that are available to be installed on the front. Now let's go ahead and move around to the inside of the case where again we have captive thumb screws keeping us from losing or dropping those stupid screws behind the desk if you ever go to change them but as you can see the panel is just one big giant window rather than having really heavy sound dampening material on there and it's a very rigid side panel so it's going to give some structural integrity now as you start taking the case apart it does have a little bit of flex to it not a lot, but because there's no hard drive cages in here in the front anywhere, it's going to have a little bit more flex to it once the side panels are off. But don't fret when it's put together. That's obviously not going to be an issue. Now you're going to see all these lines right here in the front. You might be thinking, what the heck are all those lines for? Well, they actually have all of these different lines here to give you support for reservoir mounting. Very few cases on the market actually have pre-thought out locations for installing reservoirs. And Fractal Design is now amongst the ranks of those case manufacturers that are thinking about water coolers and giving them options. Not only do they give you a place to mount your reservoir, you also have a place to mount your pump down here in the bottom of the case. And it's gonna fit all your standard uh, pump mounts like your D5, uh, the Swift Textile D5, where it just has the plastic housing or your Lang DDC, or really they, there's, universal holes there where it can slide, you can get creative. And if you needed to, you could even drill holes in the bottom if you wanted to, to mount your pump. So dedicated res uh, mounts with pump mount right below it, which is ideal for water cooling. You want the res above the pump and they make it easy for you. And that is an absolute fantastic thing. Massive cutout here on the motherboard tray, giving you easy access to uh, air cooler backplate retention brackets. Uh, some water blocks have backplate retention brackets, so it gives you easy access to that. And we do support all the way up to ATX size motherboards. Now we can't go to EATX or anything bigger than ATX because they did stick with this kind of a recessed design where the grommets here are more of at a 45 degree angle. So you can't go with wide motherboards uh, unless you start getting creative and modding. So out of the box support is ATX. Now when it comes to air coolers, it does support cooler towers that are as high as 180 millimeters. So you are going to be able to fit, you know, your favorite coolers in there like your Noctua's and 
uh, your tunics and things like that. Moving on to the top of the case, we have the same ModuVent covers on here to keep dust and sound out that you can remove them modular. That's why they're called ModuVents as you need them. And if I can find the tab on this one without having to look in there, I guess I'm not gonna be able to because Jay's a dork. So once you remove all three of these, you do have access to the top screw mounts or screw holes for installing either a 120, a 140, a 240, a 280, a 360, or a 420 millimeter radiator on the top. And of course, they keep the same design which they're known for, which is offset on the longer radiator so you don't have impact on your motherboard or your VRM coolers on the motherboard, which means you can use thick radiators. Now in terms of radiator support on the top, anything that is a 140 millimeter base radiator, that's your 140, your 280, and your 420, is gonna have a maximum thickness compatibility of 55 millimeters, including the fan. So that means you're gonna to have to stick with 30 mil rads if you're using 25 millimeter fans, because you have to center mount those and you're gonna have some impact on your motherboard and stuff. So they've already predetermined the measurements that will fit in this thing. Now moving on to the back of the case here, you have the same thumb captive screws or captive thumb screws. This is one of the heavy panels and I almost gouged and cut my jugular, which probably would have made some of you happy. Has the same um, dense material on here that's gonna help with some sound dampening, but it's probably gonna be very minimal considering the fact that nothing else in here is really sound dampened. It's probably a same panel they use on the R5s which are already manufactured. That's just an assumption anyway. Undoubtedly by this point, some people have already asked themselves, well, where the heck do you mount your storage? Well, that's one of the reasons why you have this kind of an offset design on the motherboard wall because you have three spot for three rear mounted three and a half inch mechanical drives, or you can install SSDs or two and a half inch uh, mechanical drives on the back as well. So they use the same sled design that they've been using in the past, only they've now incorporated it to fit uh, three and a half millimeter drives or three and a half inch drives. Three and a half millimeter drives would be amazing, wouldn't it? Uh, three and a half inch drives on the back as well. So SSD support, you have two of those trays that they're well known for right here that you can use to mount your SSDs. So you can have uh, theoretically support for up to five drives in this case, which is still pretty impressive considering not a lot of people are looking at adding multiple drives or massive amounts of drives. They're looking at higher capacity drives and only need a few spots. So that's perfect. It gets everything onto the back here. Uh, you do still have ventilation holes on the front, so you are gonna be able to have some cooling for your hard drives and you can still fit up to five drives on there. Now, last but not least, the cables on here are all black, which is nice to see. Huge rubber grommet, two massive grommets on the side right here, giving you plenty of uh, cable management options, which is always sometimes what's really lackluster on some cases. Uh, not so much these days, but in the past, cable management was a real bitch. And then you had one up here on the top. So let's go ahead and throw some components in this thing and kind of see how well it looks once you start filling it up and let's see if it makes the cut when it comes to being an optimized water cooling case uh, from Fractal Design. Transition. Well, I'm pleased to report that I threw some components in here and it is as, as much of a pleasure to build in as it looks right now. It, it's a mid tower, but yet it doesn't feel like a mid tower because it's so freaking roomy. I, I mean, you could put so much junk in this trunk. The badonka dunk on this is real. So I've got a full size uh, ATX motherboard in there, the ASRock Fatality 970A with an 8350. There's no block on there yet. I've got two GTX 980s uh, water cooled in here, a 250 millimeter radi uh, rad from EK Water Blocks. I've got an Alpha Cool DDC with custom top pump mounted in the bottom. And I've got a 240 rad in the front and a 360 on the top. Now I'm pretty sure I could have fit a 360 in the front as well with the 360 on the top and found a way to make them both fit without any sort of interference. In fact, uh, the manual shows that you can do it. It's a very close fit once the fans are on there, but it does fit. Uh, you might have to turn the fittings around on the bottom or something, but I mean, it's not optimal, but it's, you could do it. Unfortunately, I only have one 360 millimeter fan or a radiator or whatever. Yeah, I have a 360 millimeter, uh, 30 mil on the top and a 30 mil 240 on the front. So I'm pretty convinced I could have fit both. But what you could also do if you wanted to get really creative is you could slide the 240 all the way down and have a regular fan on the top. So you're having nice cool air enter as well as maybe some warmed up air coming through the radiator and just lots of flexibility. The bottom line here is this is a mid tower case that just feels so much bigger. I mean, you could fit so many components in this thing and nothing feels like it's competing for space. 
Unfortunately, in the R5, because it was more silence optimized and more airflow oriented, even though they added better radiator support to it than the R4 had, it still felt like a lot of things were competing for space. If you had mechanical drives, they had to go in the front. There was nowhere in the back they could go. Even with one cage in there, then you're limited to the front. You're limited to where pumps can go. It just got really tight. And that became really apparent when I built in the R5 and did a water cooling um, PETG loop for Paul's hardware when I helped him out. It really felt like things were competing for space and elbow room. But that is not the case in the Define S. I mean, everything is just got tons and tons of room. Now I've got sitting right here a Fire Pro W9000X2. Basically, this is what turned into the 7990, same length also as the 295X2. And I just wanted to show that even with the reservoir mounted, this thing would have still fit. It might be kind of hard to see from that angle, but this thing would have still fit and cleared the reservoir. So you could fit a 295X2, a super long graphics card. They say up to 480 millimeters. Technically, if you weren't water cooling, I guess you could go with the world's longest graphics card until it smacked the front of the case because there's no drive cages there. But in any case, it does have just so much freaking room in there. And it, that is going to make it easier for newer builders to do water cooling loops because they're not going to have to really do a lot of brainstorming on how things are going to work or where they're going to fit or where they're going to go because Fractal Design has already done that for you. That's a trend I'm really liking uh, to see when it comes to case design now in the future is water cooling is kind of making a comeback where it's starting to become much more mainstream, more people are doing it than ever, and case manufacturers are finally starting to accommodate that. And it really, it doesn't cost them any more to do that. In fact, this case probably costs less because there's less stuff in there. So this is my new favorite case from Fractal Design, quite honestly. I love the look of the R5, but I'm a water cooler through and through and down to my bone. This case right here, does it for me. In my opinion, there's very little that you could come up with on this case that would make it better. The only thing I could think of when I sat here looking at this and was putting the components together that would have made this any better whatsoever would be if they had thought about putting some sort of a small grommet right here next to the pump so that you could put the pump wires through and not have to run it all the way over to the big grommet, which would show. That's the only thing I could think of. And in fact, that would be an easy mod if someone would took a drill and a unit bit and went to Home Depot and bought a grommet, you could run it right through there and solve that problem quite easily. So there you go, guys. You guys have been asking me forever to do the Fractal Design Define S video. I've actually had this case since it, before it launched, but I got really behind on projects and stuff, so this took a lot longer to get done than it should have, but I hope it was worth the wait. Man, it's unfortunate that this isn't gonna stay together right now because these parts are slated for another project, but man, I do think I'm going to find something to put in here and water cool, and even if it just sits on display, because I think this case nails it when it comes to mid-towers. I do not personally feel that there's a better, more water cooling friendly mid-tower out there for both beginner and advanced builders. I know people are gonna disagree with that, but this is my opinion. That's how I feel about it. Fractal design, define S. In my, in my opinion, it doesn't get much better. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Follow on social media, Twitter, and all that sort of stuff. If you guys wanna ask any questions, and as always, thanks for watching.